If yesterday was about vindication for the Hillsborough families, today marked a fresh start in the hunt for criminal justice. The Chief Constable of South Yorkshire told Newsnight last night that prosecutions would happen if crimes were proven. Tonight, the Conservative MP at the time of the tragedy, who was one of the sources behind the Sun's ill-judged coverage, said he was deeply and sincerely sorry. Peter Marshall, who was in the crowd on the night of the tragedy, is in Liverpool and sent this report. Now the world knows the truth, the families renew their quest for justice. James Aspinall was 18, Graham Roberts just six years older. His sister and James' mum help run the bereaved family support group. They're pressing for new inquests and they're convinced there must be criminal prosecutions over the cover-up. Absolutely. I mean, you look at that. I mean, everything that they were done, everything that went against I mean, it was perverting the course of justice for a start. We could never get any justice while all that evidence was being withheld. And then to actually get them to change their statements, it's an absolute disgrace. The South Yorkshire Force altered 116 of their own officers' statements, deleting criticism of the way they'd mismanaged the crowd. One example, this passage on the scene outside Leppings Lane was removed completely. The first thing I said was, where are all the bobbies? My main observation at this point was the lack of police presence. I couldn't understand how such a large crowd could possibly have gathered. I recall in previous games there was usually a large police presence concentrated on this part of the ground, usually forming some sort of cordon. Amid all the anger over the altered statements and elaborate cover-up, questions are being asked about the role of one of the country's most senior police chiefs. He's now Chief Constable of West Yorkshire. But 23 years ago, Sir Norman Bettison was a chief inspector rising to superintendent with the South Yorkshire Force. He was chosen to be a key member of the unit specially set up by that force to handle the Hillsborough fallout. Sir Norman Bettison says his duties in the special unit never involved taking or altering statements. Newsnight has no reason to doubt that. But we found that some statements did pass through his hands at some point. Here are his initials confirming that, and there are notes suggesting he was in receipt of statements. Sir Norman Bettison further angered Hillsborough families with his comments in a statement of his own issued this morning. The more we learn about events, the more we may understand. I sat through every single day of the Taylor inquiry in the summer of 1989. I learned so much. Taylor was right in saying that the disaster was caused mainly through a lack of police control. Fans' behaviour to the extent that it was relevant at all, made the job of the police in the crush outside Leppings Lane turnstiles harder than it needed to be. But it didn't cause the disaster any more than the sunny day that encouraged people to linger outside the stadium as kickoff approached. Norman Batterson, um, we just can't believe what he's come out with and said today. Totally gone against what he said in the report yesterday. Why is he still trying to justify himself? Why can't he just apologise? We want his resignation now. But Sir Norman Bettison has faced down calls from the families to resign before, 13 years ago. By then, he left South Yorkshire and, with extraordinary irony, had got a promotion. He'd become Chief Constable of Merseyside. Today, the families say they know Sir Norman Bettison and he just doesn't get it. He doesn't get it at all. He says he only played like a peripheral role on that and he just he didn't give any order for any statements to be altered whatsoever then in that case why were they altered he must have seen that when he was looking at them he must have seen they'd been altered in some shape way or form while sir norman bettison is adamant he did no wrong and has nothing to hide a former conservative mp tonight issued a statement apologizing to the bereaved for adding to their pain and suffering Sir Irvin Patnick was revealed yesterday to be a key source behind newspaper stories claiming the fans had robbed the dead and attacked the police. He says he wants to put on record how appalled and shocked he was to discover the extent of deceit and cover-up. He says he totally accepts responsibility for passing on such information without asking further questions. The Hillsborough families plan to meet this weekend to discuss legal advice on their next steps. They want fresh inquests and they want prosecutions. Peter Marshall there. Well, let me, uh, just before we go, take you through the front pages 
of tomorrow's papers. The Independent has that scoop that we mentioned at the beginning of the program, uh, the inside story of the U.S. envoy's assassination. This is in Libya, and they're saying that the security leak blamed the killing uh, of the ambassador, and a warning that missions would be, jet, uh, would be targeted were ignored. And they say that because of this theft of secret documents since then, uh, U.S. operations have been jeopardized. On the front of the Daily Mirror, exactly the quote that uh, Peter Marshall just covered in his uh, piece, he's still blaming fans, they say, of the police chief who was talking about the fans' behavior make it harder for police to do their job. Uh, Hillsborough cover-up on the front of the Times, police to face the reckoning, and a picture there of uh, Kate Middleton uh, in Singapore on her uh, visit there. Um, Daily Mail has got the same idea, now put police lies in the dock, uh, the pressure builds for criminal charges against senior officers. In The Guardian, military plans, uh, the early Afghan withdrawal, and they have got what they're calling an exclusive, that troops could leave sooner than expected. That's according to the Defence Secretary. That's all from Newsnight tonight, but Gavin is back in the chair tomorrow. Good night from all of us here.